If you want to create realistic looking renders in Redshift, Global Illumination is the key. Now, luckily for us, the GI in Redshift is turned on by default, but there are some settings that you need to be aware of and tweak some of them in order to create optimized and better looking renders. Let's now talk about Global Illumination in Redshift. This is something that's actually turned on by default. Let me show you. If I go into the render settings here, and then go to Redshift, come down to Global Illumination. You see this is enabled by default, but I'm going to go and disable this to see what the result looks like without the Global Illumination. Before I do this, I'll go and get rid of my dome light, and then turn on my area light. So I only have a single light source in the scene here. I'm going to make a bit more space for my render view here. If I now go and disable the global illumination, the result might not be as obvious right now, but things, especially the dark areas here, will get much darker. Let me make this a bit more obvious. I'll move this down. What I have here on the right hand side is a wall. So if I go and turn this on, this is just a simple wall here. Let me just go and fly to a different angle so I can show you this. This is that wall here. In fact, let me just bring this wall closer to the ball. Like that. And then zoom in. Normally, if this was a real life scenario, we'd have this wall and everything else in the background filling in the dark areas here. Well, that's exactly what the global illumination lets you do. If I go and turn this on, the light will now bounce off this wall on the right and then fill in these dark areas. Let's do some comparisons. I'm going to go and take a snapshot of this. It does remember the snapshots of the previous one, so I'm going to go and delete these. So I only have one left. And I'll go and turn off the global illumination and come out of this and take one more snapshot. So this is with the global illumination and this is without. The render looks much better with the GI turned on, but you can see that this took 10 seconds, just under 11 seconds to render, whereas the previous one with no GI is almost 3 seconds. So that's just under 4 times difference. In an ideal world, you'd want to have the global illumination turned on all the time, so that's how you make things look realistic, but just be aware that this is going to be adding to your overall render times. Let me switch this back, and in fact I'm going to come out of my snapshot view for a second, and I'll turn on my global illumination, and then go and apply this material, the red material, to the wall on the right. Right away, since the light is now bouncing, you'll get the reflection of this red wall on the sphere as well as the shadow areas here. If I turn the GI off, this is with no reflection. If I turn it on, this is with the reflection of that light from those surfaces. I've placed one more object here, the ceiling, and that is simply a ceiling up here. So if I go and turn this on, that's that ceiling here up at the top. If I zoom back in, now that the ceiling is turned on, the light actually bounces off that ceiling as well, and it fills in these dark areas. If I go and take a snapshot first without the ceiling, so if I go and turn this off, take a snapshot, then turn it on and take one more snapshot. So this is the one with no ceiling, so the shadows are still a little too dark. This is the one with the ceiling, which lightens up not just the shadows, but the entire scene. So the light which comes from here is now bouncing around different surfaces. If I give that ceiling a different color, let's say this green material. Now the whole image, let me come out of my snapshot view. Let me zoom back in. Now this is going to have a green tint as well. Let me just refresh this real quick. And now we see that green tint in these shaded areas. So that's what global illumination is in a nutshell. It allows the light to bounce multiple times in the scene. And you can control how many times the light bounces by coming down to here where it says bounces and lowering this down. If I set this to one, the whole scene will be a little darker. So let me take one more snapshot of this with just one bounce and then set this back to four again and take another snapshot. And if I compare the two now, this is with just one bounce. This is with four bounces. So the higher the number of bounces you have, the brighter the overall image is going to get. And there are two options for the global illumination. One's called brute force, and the other one is called the radiance cache. Now brute force is the one that's going to be much more accurate in terms of how the light bounces, but it will be slower than the radiance cache. Let's compare them. First of all, I just want to have one bounce and one bounce only, so I'm going to go and set this to one. And I'll let this go through the progressive passes, so if I move this out the way, this bar here, which I can't see anymore, would show us the progress. And here it's finished, and it's 6.6 .6 seconds. If I change the primary engine from brute force to irradiance cache, let's see how long this takes. So the first one was 6.6 .6 seconds, and this one's going to be 
just under, so 6.47. But if you have much bigger scenes and more bounces, this is going to make a difference, and then the brute force is going to slow down your renders, but the results are going to be much more predictable and more even. So if you don't have too much time in your hand to render things, you can change this to your Radiance Cache, and that will be quicker. Otherwise, stick to brute force. The other downside of using the Radiance Cache is, especially when you do animation, you might end up getting some flickering in those areas. So if you're doing animation, you almost always want to stick to brute force. You'll notice as you increase the bounces from 1 to something else, let's say 2, the secondary engine also kicks in. This allows you to control how the light bounces the second time it hits the surface. So initially, the light comes from the left-hand side, hits the wall, bounces off the wall using the brute force method, and then it illuminates this side of the sphere. But it no longer bounces after that. But since I now change this to 2, the light will also bounce off the sphere, the red light coming from the wall will bounce off the sphere in all different directions. You can set that bounce, or the result of that bounce, to be controlled by the brute force as well, which is also going to be more accurate, but slower, or the irradiance point cloud, which is going to be faster, but not as accurate. So I'll stick this back to brute force, and that should give us a good enough result. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here, and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.